All right, gonna continue with the UEFI development here. I wanna try to get some rudimentary mouse support or drawing a mouse cursor, that kind of thing going. It will not work within QEMU, as from what I've read, OVMF does not include a driver by default in their, in their builds, or just by default, it doesn't include a mouse driver. For PS2 or otherwise, you have to build it with some DXC, some driver execution environment you know, branch or their, their files there. And I don't feel like building OVMF right now because you have to make a build system to be able to build it and add that in. And I couldn't really find a clear cut answer on how to do that. So I got to research that more. But anyway, mouse support does work on hardware that I've found. There can be multiple versions of the simple pointer protocol. So I'm going to be going through that probably through locate protocol and then locate handle buffer or other ways of opening multiple protocols. So the simple pointer protocol is going to be for the mouse. That is, I don't remember where it's at, to be honest. I know it's like up here somewhere, so. <laughs> Probably just the main page here. Let's let's see. I don't remember where this stuff's at. So simple pointer protocol. Okay, 12.5. So that was probably in console support as well. Oh, there it is. Okay. So that defines a detailed description. So this goes over mouse support. I'm going to add this in right quick, though. Of course, before I do anything, <laughs> I have a little bit of an error. I'll probably put a, a picture on screen. On my laptop, when I'm going through the graphics modes, it, it, it works. It works to set the modes, but it includes more modes than the laptop supports by default. So it only has like five modes, zero through four, and QEMU has 30. And I didn't consider the case where the number of modes supported was less than the size of the screen, for example. So that's a bug. So I got to change that in my code here so that it works a little bit better on the laptop. So I'm going to do that. The goal is true hardware support with this series, not just emulation. So I'm gonna do that, and I think we can do it with a couple line changes here where I'm getting the menu length and setting the top and the bottom of the menu. I think I just have to change these values here. So I know the max graphics mode supported from the max value here, so I can just do a check there. If the max mode supported is less than the length of a menu, I kind of want to, you know, decrease that that length there. So how would I do that? I would probably reset where the bottom of the menu is going to go. Two rows above keybinds is fine, but I'll probably decrement that a bit more and just set that to where the max is, which is going to be five. So I don't want to do that. We'll say the top of the menu plus plus the max. So. If we have five total modes, say we'll have modes zero through four, zero based indexing, the entire length would be five, zero, one, two, three, four. This would be menu top plus five, which would be um, at five, so right below four. So I might do like another one where I actually draw the stuff. We'll see if this works. So menu, top, menu bottom would be top plus max, and then we can just re-get the length here, which I'll just copy that in. Okay, so I can see what that looks like. Set graphics mode, okay. So this doesn't change anything because I'm not emulating any less than the, the number that's supported. It only supports 30 modes by default in OVMF and QEMU. The laptop may be a little bit different. So I guess I'll go ahead and check that, but I need to check with my USB, so let me do that. Uh, okay, so we have that there. Guess I'll do it from here. So that's SDC is my USB, so. Uh, forgot that's one folder up. It would have made the test.hdd file. We can just write directly to there and with a one meg block size. So that'll be a little bit faster. Have to tell it it's okay. All right, easy enough. And SDC is magically gone. Oh. And we'll see if that works. I guess I'll edit this out of the video as I'm testing this right quick. Okay, I'll put the next picture up here. <laughs> that almost worked. It turns out that it's an off by one error, of course. There is no actual 
graphics mode that's equal to the max, so the length would actually have to be bottom minus top minus one. So the actual number of modes, this would be, I guess, five, but we only need to go up after the first one. It needs to be limited to max minus one. So limit number of modes to max mode minus one. Okay. And we'll say bound menu actual number of available modes. Okay, so that'll work. That'll get it get rid of that off by one error right there. So this would be five, right? Because if, for example, we have five available modes, this would be five minus one would be four. So it would start at zero and go up four after that to four. So, okay, just a small thing there to ensure that it works on the laptop. So barring that, I do want to test mouse support. We could put it like on all the screens effectively. We'd have to add code, kind of an overall wrapper for everything or in each menu, or we can just have it on the main menu or we can have like a sub menu, like the set graphics and text modes for the mouse. Right now I'll do that just so things are neatly separated. Okay, so yeah, just so things are a little more neatly separated, I'm just gonna add another choice to the main menu here for, we'll say testing. So I'll say test mouse, or test mouse cursor. I'll yeah, we'll say test mouse. That's fine. Yeah, we'll say test mouse, that's fine. So we need a function for that, so we'll call it, or I'll call it test, test mouse. That's, that'll be all right. So what did I have for these? Oh, I guess I didn't take in anything for those. All right, so we'll just not take in anything for that either. So we'll say test mouse and cursor support with test mouse and cursor support with the simple pointer protocol or SPP. And we'll just return success by default and that is all right. So right now it's not going to do anything. But if I look at the menu, I have another option here for testing the mouse. All right, which does nothing. So I'm going to do something similar as I did for the graphics output protocol. I know I have to add the struct definitions and the GOP and everything, but I'll probably try locate protocol first. So maybe I'll just copy all that first. And we'll get the simple pointer protocol. Let's say we have a GUID for it, which I'll add in a second, or I'll look it up in the spec itself, and I'll move that over. So the simple pointer protocol will have its own GUID value. If I simple pointer protocol GUID, if I dot H will go to wherever the GUIDs are. Yeah, right here, okay. So we'll, point, we'll put the simple pointer protocol right there. And again, my only change for these is just moving moving that brace over, over there because they define the node value to be six bytes and not eight, so that's okay. Then we'll have the simple pointer protocol and all of its stuff. It is at 12.5, so maybe I have 12.4 in here, maybe somewhere, or 12.5 even. No, we do have four though. So I can put it after that. After simple text output, we'll say an input yeah, so I'll put it after here. So EFI, simple pointer protocol. I just kind of wanted to keep all the input protocols together. That was the only reason for that. So it's in 12.5. So what this does is define a method of getting a device such as a mice or a trackball. Uh, a device like a tablet, like a touchscreen, would use the absolute pointer protocol. And I may want to test that as well, but... Again, I don't think OVMF has a driver for that by default. It does have a driver for simple pointer protocol, although it doesn't work. Sorry, it doesn't have a driver. It has the protocol, but it doesn't have like an actual working instance of that. But hardware does, at least my hardware does. So I'll show that. But I'll just grab the struct here. Like any good engineer, I'm just going to copy paste and see the error, the errors they have, like the slash for that. So 
So we have a few things here. Again, we can reset it. We can get the current mouse state. We have a wait for input similar to the wait for key event in the simple text input protocol. We have a wait for input for a mouse event in this case, or a pointer event in the simple pointer protocol. And we have a mode describing sort of what info that that would contain. So we can wait for input from the device with that, similarly to getting a key. And we have a mode for pointer for mode data. So a simple pointer mode, I can grab that. And that will be defined above where this is at. So we have XYZ resolution. Although on devices I've tested, uh, which is really just a touchpad so far, uh, it only has X and Y. It does not have a Z resolution. So we might only have to worry about 2D, a 2D plane here, just X and Y coordinates. But these give, interestingly enough, if it explains it, I don't think it does. Oh yeah, it does. So these are defined in counts per millimeter. So if it returns a, a 10, it would be 10 counts, whatever that means, per millimeter. So if you move, if you move the pointer around and it moves a millimeter, that would equal you know one of these counts per millimeter values, I guess. And this the specification does explain in an appendix, I think, what that should correspond to, and I'll look that up in a second. I'll just get through the other, the other functions here first, and these define the pointer protocol as well. So probably have to type def the struct here. which is all right. Type def it as itself so we can get around that. Because I'm not a good programmer. All right. We'll grab the reset function there. So I'm not gonna be using extended verification. I'll just send it this, that's all right. And I'll just put the comments here, of course. Simple pointer protocol reset or simple pointer reset. Twelve five two. Did we have twelve five one? I guess that's just the protocol itself. Okay. So that would reset the firmware and check it. Then we have get state. That gets the current mouse state. So simple, simple pointer get state, and that's at three. And they didn't even, they missed their opening parenthesis there. They have a lot of issues with their, uh, or conversion to text for PDF, it seems like. And if the same issues are on the HTML version of the spec, they should probably try and clean that up. Run some basic, you know, checks for that. Some build time error checking. But that's all right. This also defines the simple pointer state. So I'll put that above there. And this is similar to the mode info except it defines things a little bit differently. Instead of uint64, we have int32 because we can move in a positive or negative direction for x and y and z. So if we're moving up or down or left or right, it'll be a positive or negative number, you know, in, in relation to where the mouse was. <laughs> and these are also in points per millimeter, or counts rather, counts per millimeter. So the actual distance is relative movement over resolution millimeters. If it's zero, it does not support that axis, and the left or right mouse button will be on or one or true. If you are pressing, at the moment we call get state, if you're pressing the left, the left or right button, it will be marked as a one or true. Uh, there's also device paths you can follow if you want to see if the ACPI info is correct for, say, a PS2 mouse or a USB emulating a PS2, a plug and play device. I didn't mean to press whatever I just did. I'll press D right. A. Don't do. 
don't do whatever I just did. <laughs> All right, where was I at? Simple pointer state, yes, okay. So this gives values in relative movement, which can be positive or negative, and the mode gives values in the resolution. So we have to divide relative movement by the resolution to get the actual count or movement per millimeter. So that's what I will be doing. And there's not much, it's only get state and reset. And then we have an event for wait for input. And the mode is the mode, okay. So how, how do you know how much, um, say a millimeter? If you know we move so many millimeters on screen, how do you know what that corresponds to in terms of your screen resolution? Well, they do tell you that somewhere at the bottom. Yeah, Appendix F using the simple pointer protocol. Ability to adjust double click speed, interesting. So we're not doing that. They just give recommendations for basic mouse support. X should be horizontally, Y should be vertically. Z axis should scroll the output. Okay, so Z axis may correspond to mouse wheel. That's interesting, I never checked that before. And it tells you if, if you have a timer set up or you know how to measure time, then anything less than half a second between clicks could be counted as a double click. And the pointer speed should tell you how far to move. So yeah, we have a set of resolution fields that define the number of counts received for each millimeter of movement. From these two values, the consumer can determine the distance we have been moved in millimeters along an axis. For most applications, you'll move a pointer on the screen for each millimeter of motion on the x-axis. You should the pointer on the screen will be moved two percent of the screen width. For each millimeter in the y-axis, we move 2% of the screen height. Okay, so each millimeter will correspond to 2%. So, uh, I don't know what I just did. Oh, I pressed the first. <laughs> okay, so if each thing is 2%, then if we have 1920, for example, so 2% of the horizontal axis here, for a 1080p screen, for example. Um, oh, DC isn't infix, duh. <laughs> DC is postfix. Or, well, reverse Polish notation. So that's going to be 38.4 pixels. That would be moved for one millimeter, if I'm reading that correctly. So if we want to do the Y direction, that'd be approximately 21.6 pixels. Now you can have ratios, you know, you have a percentage there, sort of, you have a fraction, so that's not going to correspond neatly to integer values, such as the resolution and relative movement. So it'll be a little odd. Uh, I'm also not going to be doing like mouse, uh, mouse acceleration, which you'd have for a timer. You'd sort of lerp between two values and depending how fast you move the mouse, you want to move a farther distance or a lesser distance. I'm not really going to be worrying about that. I'm just doing like very basic support here because that's less work for me to do in a video. <laughs> we'll move this off, I think. Move that back. So I have the GUID, which is not going to be graphics output. It'll be simple pointer protocol GUID for the SPP. I'll have the simple pointer protocol struct, I'll just call it S SPP, I have a pointer to that, and simple pointer mode will have, I'll just call it simple pointer protocol mode as well. We don't need the mode info size, status, sure. Don't need a mode index, don't need this. All right, so I can try to do locate protocol, and I'll show why it doesn't work because the first one or the one it returns isn't really going to be valid, but it is on the system for some reason. It's kind of like a, a null or a some some default value for this protocol that they include for whatever reason. But if we want to find that, do an undo, right undo, all right. <laughs> if we want to find that, we can search for the simple pointer protocol GYD through locate protocol, give a null and give the address of the simple pointer protocol pointer that it will be filled out with. We could not locate that. That's not as immediately obvious as the GOP, the graphics output, so I'll actually spell that out. All 
Okay, if we did find it, then we're good to go. Let's just make sure we do find it. For the test mouse function here, I could clear, clear the screen as well, so I might do that. Might as well. Uh, simple input mode is not correct. Oh, I probably did that on the other one, didn't I? Where's that at? Unknown type 394? Oh. Oh, simple input mode. So the spec <laughs> called it simple input mode, but where they define the mode, they called it simple pointer mode. So let me call it the right name. Thank you, UEFI spec. You're always good. Yeah, unused variable SPP. So if I test the mouse, nothing happens. It doesn't go back. It doesn't print we could not locate. So I, I think I'm all right. I think we probably found the mode there. So I'll just print initial SPP info and we'll, uh, we'll do that. So we would have gotten the mode. So I guess I'll print the mode info here. I guess we'll say the resolution values, yeah. That's fine. These are all UN64s, so I'll do percent %U, because I think I have that under printf, or the other printf, the error one. I do have X. I don't have U. We could do U for an unsigned number. So yeah, let me, let me add that, because that's not very hard to add. So I'd U be print a U in 32 by by default. I could have sworn I had that before. I guess not. That's okay. Do I want to go in alphabetical order? No, because that's before it. Okay. So print F percent U, this will be a U in 32. Don't need to call print int or hex. We'll print the number. Uh, we'll print the number as base 10. We'll say it is not going to be signed. And we'll just do that for a uint32. That'll be easy enough. I also have octal... If I remember right, yeah, I have octal and binary support, but I'm not really using that, so... I could add those as well. I guess I'll add those as optional cases here. So like how the X does. This does a uint n. So I'll do that for octal and hex. And I know these are uint64 and I'm going to print 32-bit. I know that's bad, but considering that the relative movements are 32 and I'm only going to be bounded by probably a 16-bit number for common screen resolutions, even up to like 8K, I'm not going to be worried too much about that here. But my, uh, my digression is going to print other things. So let's say we have a percent %b for binary. So we'll do that. So we percent %b. We'll have a u and 32. Well, actually, we can do a u and n for binary. So we'll have number, print number as base 2. Then we'll have it be unsigned. And I should add tests for these, of course. And then I'll have percent %o, I guess we'll make it as octal. And that'll be base 8, so that'll print the other things out. Cool. And since those aren't in the non-error printf, I'm going to copy that and put it in the regular one. I do have a U for the regular one, I just didn't add it to the error, the error one, so that's okay. And I did the same thing, U went 32. All right. <laughs> Followed what I did in the past. So that should not compile, because I did not end this, of course. I save the file. All right, just wanted that to compile right quick. So let's see about mouse info here. If I print the resolutions, yeah, we'll just do X percent U. We'll have Y. We'll have Y and U. Sorry, Y and Z percent U. Then we'll have the left and right button. I guess I'll just put it all in one line. Might as well. We'll have left button. This could be a Boolean. <laughs> But I want, well, we can try that out and I'll change it in a second. <laughs> Just to make sure that that actually does work for 
uh, for my printf here. So this would be S SPP is a pointer. If that was filled out, we need to get the mode within that, which the mode is going to be a pointer. So SPP dereference to the mode, dereference to the resolution X value. X, Y, and Z values. And the left and right buttons. Okay, and we'll see what that looks like. Still unused SPP mode. Oh, I'm not using the mode. Well, I guess I don't need it if it's already included in the regular one. Uh, and if it does print, it goes on immediately. So I did not consider that. <laughs> Let's get a key before moving on. All right. I pressed the key to full screen. That's why it went back. So, okay. Resolution is the 16-bit limit for X, Y, and Z which means it's not valid. It's the same as zero effectively, but they don't, they don't say that in the spec. Left button, it does have a left and a right button, I guess, because they're both one and the zero B one works. So that's cool. Okay, but I'll print those as, I guess, U values. They're only gonna be zero or, or one anyway, so that's fine. I suppose if I'm not using the mode, I don't need it. I will need a pointer for the state though, when we use get state. So we'll, I will make a, a variable for that. I'll probably have another input loop, though, because we'll want to stay on the screen. So let me do that. And I do need to get multiple protocols as well, actually. Let me do that. Because um, this one is invalid. And on my laptop, when I've tested, I've also gotten that same sort of initial invalid mode. So... If there's a way that there's more than one mode, or sorry, yeah, well, in this case, yeah, if there's a way that there's more than one simple pointer protocol or mode for the, the mouse support, how do we get that? How do we get multiple protocols here? If we only have locate protocol, that gets one at a time at most, the first one that's that's found. So if I want to get multiple, well, there's a way to do that as well, which I don't think I have set in the boot services table. And that would be locate handle buffer, which is in library services. So I'll add a stub for that. Locate handle buffer. And in the in the UEFI spec, that's gonna be probably under boot services, which is services. It'll be under library if they have it. I guess they don't. Protocol handler, probably under protocol handler. And yeah, locate handle buffer. Went too far over. Okay, so what, what does this do? This returns an array of handles instead of one. Well, we're not even getting a handle right now, but instead of getting one protocol, the first one that's found, we're gonna return an array of handles that support a protocol, and then we can open the protocol for that handle that's returned. Okay, and this is called, yes, locate handle buffer. Make sure the name is right. And that is at 7.3.15, which we can put it somewhere up here. I guess these are all over the place, aren't they? <laughs> I'll put it after the pointer protocol, sure. So if I locate handle buffer, 7315. Okay, so we have handles, which don't mean much of anything. They're just an opaque thing that we can do, that we can interact with, that represents a device. And we'll have a number of handles, we'll have a buffer, because I don't think I use this for... Well, I haven't used it yet, so yeah. <laughs> I did not use this for the GOP because I was only assuming there's one GOP. We could have used it for that as well. A different use case would be finding all the block I.O. buffers, well, all the block I.O. protocols for storage devices for your system. So you could use this to locate all your 
hard disks that are available through UEFI, for example. We'll probably do that later when I want to make a sort of installer to write this bootloader to a different disk. Right now, I'll just use it for finding the, uh, the simple pointer protocols. So I'm going to search by protocol. Probably, we won't do all handles. Yeah, I'll do search by protocol. And the GUID will search for, will be the simple pointer protocol. The search key uh, needs to be, I hate that I keep doing that. <laughs> keep pressing D, which makes like a double-sided view of this. So I don't mean to be doing that. I mean to, I mean to do control D to go down by a page because Vim keybinds, does it say whatever else is there? Oh yeah, number of handles, search key is the search key depending on the type. Okay, so if we do by protocol, search key is ignored, so we don't have to worry about that. We can send null. The number of handles will be a variable that's filled out with the size of the array, and it'll fill a buffer in. So we'll have to free the memory later, or we should free the memory later, because this will internally allocate a memory pool that will return the buffers. Well, that will return a buffer with the specified handles that support a given protocol, which is a mouthful. Buffer is allocated from pool, so we can use free pool for this later. So do I have that? Uh, free pool, no. Free pool, I don't have that yet either. But let me get the... Do we have the search type? If I locate search type, where is that contained? Hmm, not there. Okay, here we go. Locate handle. Locate handle actually specifies the by protocol search. Locate search type is just an enum with all handles, register, notify, and by protocol. So I'll put that before locate handle buffer. Okay, so we'll be searching by protocol, and we'll give the GUID and all that value, all those values. So let me look at the memory services as well, because I'll need free pool to free the buffer allocated by locate handle buffer. And it is pretty simple. This is 725. And we just give it a void pointer to the buffer. So a handle is a void pointer, or is void. So we could just give it the buffer, or we could cast it to void pointer, it doesn't matter. I guess it'll convert it to void pointer anyway, so we could probably just pass it any pointer, and it would free the memory at that pointer. That'd be all right. Okay, so free pool within boot services. Because I will want to use that later. We'll define that. Okay. All right, so that'll be by protocol. And we'll search for these things. So we'll yoink that back over there. So I'll say use locate handle buffer to find all simple pointer protocols. Yeah, <laughs> and get a valid one. I'll just say that. So locate handle buffer search type we want to do by protocol. Uh, the protocol I want to give will be an address to the GUID for the simple pointer protocol, which I have up there. The search key can be null. The number of handles, I need a uint n value. Um, so I'll call it, I don't know, number of handles. We'll give the address of that. And then we need a buffer, which is a handle pointer. So 
So I'll call it, I'll call it a, a handle buffer there. And since it needs a double star, we can just give the address to that single star buffer and that'll work. Cannot locate simple pointer protocol handle buffer, we'll say. But if we did, then we want to go through those. So we'll go through those if we found them. So we'll just go, go through all the handles in the buffer there, which would be handle handle buffer i. So we want to interrogate and get whatever values are at that are at the protocol for that handle. So we have the handle, but we don't have the protocol. So I kind of have to open that. I'll say for each handle till we get a valid one. <laughs> okay, so I know we'll have this. So I think that's also BS because I keep closing the spec when I want to get back to it. So that will be handle protocol or open protocol, which did I already use that? I probably did not, right? I did not, okay. So we need, nope, yeah, open protocol is not there either. <laughs> so I need open and possibly closed protocol as well. So that will be nice. Okay, so open protocol queries a handle to determine if it supports a protocol. If it is supported, it will open that on behalf of the calling agent, which is our program calling it. Um, this is what you should use instead of handle protocol, I believe. I thought, or is handle protocol what we should use? One, one of these somewhere says that old versions of the EFI spec say you should use this version instead, or this function instead. I forget. It, I guess it's not this protocol function, but that's okay. So I'll lay this out. If I open protocol, open protocol. That's at 739. Guess I'll put it after wait for event, sure. Okay, so what do we have with this? We have a handle, we have a protocol to search for, we have an interface, we have an agent handle and a controller handle and attributes. And I will not be using all of these things because I don't really know what they're gonna be used for or what they mean. So that's off boot services. I know I'm gonna be open in the protocol though. So the handle for the interface that is being opened, let's use that, so that's gonna be Handle buffer I, that will hold the handle that supports the given sim simple pointer protocol. And I need the protocol, which is the GUI. So I want to open, open the SPP. I need the SPP GYD, or GUID, however you say that. Give the address of that, give the interface. Where the protocol is returned, there we go, we can use the protocol itself. That is a void double pointer. So we'll see this nonsense again to just call it SPP. Okay, then what do we have? Agent handle and controller handle. If we follow the driver model as a handle that contains driver binding protocol. For UEFI applications, this is the image handle that is opening the protocol interface. So I have that as a global variable. I have image, and that's filled out from the initial image handle in main which is passed by the firmware. So I can just use that here, call it handle or call it image. Yeah, call it image. And then I need the controller handle. If it does not follow the driver model, it's optional, maybe null. 
Okay, and I'm not doing that, so that can be null. And then we'll have attributes, the open mode, related definitions are the list of legal attributes. So we will be doing by handle protocol, which performs the same function as handle protocol with more functionality and handle protocol can call this function with this attributes value. Okay, so I would be doing if I open protocol by handle protocol. So I'll put that in my header file under here. Yeah, we'll just do it there. Is that 32 bit? 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 4, 20. Yep, 32 bit one. Um, I could put the other ones as well. I guess, eh, yeah, while I'm here, that's fine. Yeah, so we'll just be calling by handle protocol. I guess we could do git and test, see if it's on the system, see if we're doing it for a controller, if we're writing a driver, or git exclusive access. Don't really know. The spec tells me right here, though, but I'm too lazy to read it. But we'll do open protocol by handle protocol and see if that opens. See if we can open it. And if not, if not, we can see why. So this will be could not open simple pointer protocol on handle. And we'll give a status. Okay. So now we'll banish that to the shadow zone. And if we did get a status, we can interrogate the values. So I'm just going to say we can print them all out initially, really, because that should have filled out the struct, which would have this info. So we can have a number here. Which will just be I in this case. So we should only get one, I think. We should only have like one handle returned, but we'll we'll see. Uh, it's not called prot call, it's protocol. All right, yes, I only get one. Now on my laptop, I believe I get two. So I can show that right quick. I will do that. Okay, that does return two, but I did not put a new line. Let me put a new line there. Or even after. Let me put a new line there. That'll, that'll look better. Still nothing there, but that's all right. At least the iteration speed is pretty fast. Less than a minute, typically. Up to two minutes. Now, if you have an older laptop with a slow hard drive, of course, that'll be longer. This is one of the only things that we have to test extensively going back and forth emulation and hardware to test because, because uh, again, OVMF doesn't have that info built in, but that's all right. Okay. So for my laptop, I have two modes. The first one is the same as an emulation, just the 16 bit limit for the X, Y, and Z resolutions. And the second mode I have, I only have two, but the second mode corresponds to the touchpad on my laptop and it has an X resolution of four. Y resolution of four, no Z resolution, and a left and right mouse button. So what that means is we have a, a four counts per millimeter action. Well, four counts per millimeter sort of movement we can affect. I could just use the last one that's here, but let's say we will have filled out the SPP. So if this is valid, I can just check that and we'll say if, if we have an X resolution, then I'm going to say it's valid. So if this is less than 65536, I'll say we found a valid one and I'm just going to leave. This is not a good way of doing it, but I could also say 
I don't really know. I mean, that's what I found for being the, the limit here. So if it's less than that, I'll say found a valid mode. Or I can say we can have a Boolean as well. Boolean found mode is false. And if we do this, we'll say found mode is going to be true. And we'll say if not found mode, because that'll still work with C's built in types, because it'll only be zero or one. If not found mode, we'll print an error that says uh, cannot find mode. Could not find any valid simple pointer protocol mode. We don't we won't have a status for that. And I'll return EFI uh, invalid. I'll just return one, I guess, because that won't be a success. So we'll see. Does that work in emulation? Does it say we don't have a valid mode? It doesn't because I don't get a key. So we don't see it pop up on the screen. <laughs> there we go. Could not find any valid mode. All right. On my laptop, we would have a valid mode here. So else found valid SPP mode. Okay, get uh, get mouse input. So I guess the initially I'll print the initial mouse movement, which won't be anywhere, and we won't see it on the screen until we draw a cursor, but let's just get something on the screen right now for, uh, for testing that this works. So let's print the initial mouse state before we start moving it, so we have something to print here. And we'll say X, well, this will be movements. Um, I guess it'll be millimeters, right? So we'll say X millimeter, Y millimeter, and this will be assigned. These will be signed numbers. We won't do Z millimeter. I'll say left button and right button. Right, so that'll be all right. And then I'll go, I guess I won't print that. Um, Let's do that before we... Well, this won't matter. I guess in the loop it will. But we could overwrite the line with the mouse movement. So if I overwrite it by returning at the end, then I will want to print an initial new line. Yeah, so I'll do that. Just so it's on its own line here. But we'll go back to the start so we can rewrite over these values in a loop. That's what I'll do. Okay, so we have to get the initial mouse state. Uh, initially, it's just going to be zero. And then we'll get the values in an input loop. So right now, we'll do while one or while true. And if we want to escape from the menu with an escape key or another key press, we can handle that as well. So we can have an event loop going for the mouse state and the input key state, which is why there are two separate uh, events we can use, a wait for key and a wait for whatever this was, wait for input, I think. So we can see which one of those we got. I think it's events, yep. E5 events, and we'll have the events here, we'll say we have two. And this will be the wait for key event from CN. And it'll be SCP, or... SCP, yeah, no, the simple pointer protocol wait for event as well, which I think is, let me just make sure. No, we have wait for event, but that's, that's not it. Uh, it's wait for input. But I believe wait for key is in, yeah, the input protocol. Okay, so wait for input is the other event, so we'll add those as the list of events here. And then we'll call wait for events, so we need an index as well. So call it, let's say index. And I think we can have wait for events now, let me search. So yes, this is what I did here. So wait for event given the number of total events, which is going to be two, the events itself and the index of the returned event, and then we can check the index. 
So the first one I did was wait for key. So if it's zero here, we know we had a key press. And we can interrogate that. You can say else if, and a switch would work if you have multiple events as well. You know, just doing an if case here. Else if events, if index is one, it really shouldn't be anything other than zero or one, but I guess I'll only handle these with if and else if. I'll say mouse movement or mouse event. If you press the, the left or right mouse button and didn't move it, it probably would still generate an event. So I won't say movement there. Okay, if we did get a key press, I'll say if I think it's key. Nope, is it input key? And if I input key, key will be read keystroke, which I think is all I need for that. Yeah, this and a key. Don't do what I just did. There we go. All right. Okay, and then you can interrogate that key value. We'll say if key dot scan code equals the escape scan code, then we'll go back or we'll just leave the loop here. We'll even go back to main menu. If it's not the escape key, I don't really care what it is. Else we got a mouse event. So I can rewrite whatever we got for that. So we'll get the mouse state and then we'll print the info. Which I'll do here. So how do we get the mouse state? We need simple pointer state. Yes. So do I have a struct for that? I think I made one. Nope, I didn't make one. <laughs> I thought about it. So we can just do it here because this will be only locally scoped to this portion. If I simple pointer state, we'll say state, uh, which is not going to be anything here. And then we call what get state, right? Okay, which gives that all right. So we'd call simple pointer protocol dereference to get state. And we give the this parm and we give the state value, which is going to be an address of that state variable there. And then we can interrogate that state, which has the relative movements here. So how do we do that? We'll have an X, Y, an L, and a B button. We'll have to divide, right? Is it relative over resolution? Is it resolution over relative? I don't, I don't remember. Because <laughs> why would I remember? Uh, simple pointer protocol gets state. Uh, the actual distance is relative movement over resolution. Okay. Movement is relative. Movement is, we'll say, SPP state. SPP, SPP state's relative movement divided by SPP's resolution. It's in millimeters. Um, one millimeter equals 2% of horizontal or vertical resolution. All right. So let's say we have that here. These are in N32 values. So let's say we have an X millimeter and a Y millimeter value. So well, I can just do this in line, can't I? The X millimeter, which, which makes me think of X military by death grips, but <laughs> X millimeter would be the relative over resolution. So we'll do that. So that would be the state, which is a pointer. No, this is a uh, just a struct. So I could make it a pointer. I don't think I need to, though. So we'll do state dot uh, relative movement X, and it would be divided by. I guess SPP mode. Okay. Divided by the SPP mode resolution X. Okay. 
But we could have cases where you move the mouse a small amount, and since this is integer division, it's going to truncate and round towards zero. So we probably should do floats and then maybe convert. That might give a little bit smoother movement. EFI doesn't define floats, does it? Or does it? It probably does. I don't remember. I probably would have written it down in data types, but I don't remember, so... <laughs> It's under one of these, calling conventions data types. Is there a float type? No? Okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, C has a float type, so we could use that. And then convert to an int32. So let's say... We'll say we'll do this. This is probably not the right way to do it, but oh well. It's one way of doing it for greater precision, right? Okay, so that will equal int32, xmm float. And this might still truncate to zero, so th this might just be futile, but I don't know. <laughs> anyway. So I'll say if we have a case where XMM float is greater than zero, and I might not be able to compile this with floating point support, I just realized. We'll see. If I have an issue compiling with floating point, then I'll remove this, but I'll just, I'll see. This is an experiment, right? But I'm just going to set it to a minimum of one millimeter if they moved a small enough amount that it was truncated to zero. But you still want to, if you move the mouse, you want to see it move on screen, right? So I still want to do that. So that's why I'm doing this, to have a little bit of better stuff there. So say if moved a tiny bit, show that on screen. <laughs> For a small minimum amount. Okay. So that gets the number of millimeters that was moved. That doesn't get the number of pixels per resolution that was moved. So uh, we don't need to worry about that yet because I'm not drawing a mouse cursor. But we will have to get that for the cursor. So I'll probably make that maybe an int32 as well. X millimeter res, I don't, I don't know, resolution I guess. X resolution millimeter. So that could also be a float because that will end up being our sort of our GOP value, so we'll have to get that as well. <laughs> so I probably should make that global when I get the GOP. I'm not doing that. I probably should do that, though. Oh, I guess I'll do this again. This will be locate handle buffer... All right, so we'll get that so we can call query mode and GOP. Uh, mode number would be the current mode. I don't know what that looked like. Graphics output protocol, query mode. So we need the size of info and info, of course, which I did up here, that one. So did I get, yeah, mode info size and info, okay. All right, because I'm gonna use that later for resolution values down here. Um, I guess right now I should see what draw, this won't draw on here, it'll have to draw on the laptop, I realized, but that's all right. We can fill out these values here. I don't have a Z millimeter, so I won't worry about that. The left button will be the state. which should have left button and right button. Okay, redefinition of status. That's 698 here, that's true. And input key is not valid, invalid initializer. Oh, initializer. Oh, I can't do that. 
Uh, we'll just have key then. Oh, I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> this takes in the key. Sorry, I thought it returned a key. No, that takes in a key here. I know I got a key. To get it, I have to send it in there. Yeah, that's that's fine. Okay, that compile test mouse is not going to show anything, so that'll have to be on the laptop. So I can show that. And I'm going to take a small break and get water, and I will show that. So yeah, <laughs> I'll see you in a second. All right, got everything plugged in, set up. Camera's pointing at the laptop. Wrote the USB, so moment of truth, right? If I can plug it in. All right. Have the F12 plan of attack. Might have to change the settings and stuff depending on how the capture looks. Eh, it's not terrible. Probably should angle this a little bit better. Like that. Okay. You get the, you know, screen effect. Sorry about that. But anyway. So text mode, graphics. We'll test the mouse. So we have two modes here. And you can see the second resolution has four counts per millimeter for the X and Y, and it has a left and right mouse button. So I didn't really, well, I guess I messaged it a little, or uh, touched it a little bit, so. And I'm not rewriting the line, which I thought I was. I forgot the extra new line there. But if I move the mouse, you can see it does move by a small amount if I do left and right. If I move up, up and down, doesn't do anything. You figure float would have signed values. I guess it doesn't. It does have, oh, there we go. If I move a wide amount, then we have some negative values there. And it looks like we're getting the same values, so I have issues. But anyway, you can see that the left, the left button occurs and the right button occurs if I press the portions on my touchpad or both at once, I think. Yeah. So you can get some little sophisticated things. So I'll, I'll change how the printing is working, maybe the getting the millimeter calculations, but you can see that it at least works, right? On the laptop, but not on emulation. So let's fix up the printing a little bit, and let's draw a cursor to sort of round out this video here. Okay, so let's see what the issue was. I'll get rid of the to-do, or what the issues are. There's probably multiple. So X float gets relative over resolution, Y float gets relative, X, yeah, this needs to be Y. <laughs> It's what you get for copying and pasting. But these both reference X and Y respectively, as do these, as does this. Okay, yeah, that would explain why they were equal. <laughs> They're getting the same values, but that's all right. I did see negatives. Depending how the int interprets that, I might have to change that, of course, if that doesn't work very well. I am using floats after all, but okay. So that would explain why they were the same. So to draw the cursor, one millimeter should be 2% of the horizontal or vertical resolution. So let's say the X resolution in millimeters is going to be our X resolution, which is why I had the query mode for GOP earlier, which gets the mode info. Um, I thought I had it in, oh, probably this. So if I get, yeah, mode info, horizontal and vertical resolution, I'll just search for that and copy that because I don't want to think about that. So the horizontal resolution multiplied by not two, not dot, not two, o dot o two for two percent of the screen. X resolution, and we'll do Y resolution as well, which is going to be the vertical resolution multiplied by 0 0.02. Okay. So if we have that, let's say we have. Maybe I'll put it at the top here. It could be uint n or uint 8, maybe. Well, we can make uint n, it's fine. We'll say cursor size. And I'll make it some value like 8 or 10. 8 generally is okay if we make a square. A square rectangle that's like 8 by 8. Then 8 by 8 pixels, that, that is. So I'll say size n pixels. Uh, then it's, it's decent enough and you can see it for like a box that's drawn on the screen. So I'll start with a box and we'll do that. So how would I do that? Well, we can start... So we can start in the middle of the screen and we can draw like an initial mouse state and draw the initial cursor here. So how would I do that? We can blit from a blit buffer or we can draw directly to the frame buffer either way. 
I mean, we have a GOP. We can probably use Blit and draw from the Blit buffer. That's probably all right. I'll just copy what I had before for that. And we need a buffer if we want to do video fill. Um, I probably won't be doing that. I'll probably be doing Blit buffer to video. So we would need a buffer to run for or to print that. So maybe drawing directly to the frame buffer would be easier, actually. So I might do, might do that instead. I do want to fix the issue where we have a new line. Don't want to do that. Just print the same line and then overwrite yourself, which sounds like an insult in, in hacker speak, but <laughs> go overwrite yourself. Make a new version that I like better. But what am I looking for? Frame buffer. Oh, I just had it. Yeah, frame buffer, base, and size. So I need the base. Because I need where I'm going to draw the cursor. So I can have a couple things for that. I don't mean to be putting everything at the top like it's C89 or anything, but it, it works right now. So U and is probably fine. We'll say X and Y values, but we can probably make them signed because the N32s will be potentially a negative movement, so I'll make it signed so we can just add them. So let's say X, um, let's say cursor X and cursor Y. Yeah, we'll do that. So these will be positions. Of course, you can make, you know, a tuple or a better way of doing this, <laughs> but I'll just say we have an X and Y here. So cursor X will equal, we'll start in the middle of the screen, we'll say. Start off in middle of screen. So X would be the horizontal resolution, which is gotten from the mode info. So hor horizontal resolution, we'll divide it by two. And then if we want to, um, bias isn't the right word, but if we want to adjust that for the mouse cursor, because if we start in the exact middle, and we're drawing left to right up to down, then we'll have the cursor will be slightly off center to the right, because it'll start drawing from the left to the right. So if we want to center it, because how do you center a cursor? That's the same way as centering a div, you just can't do it. Now if we want to center it, we can subtract half of the size of the thing that we're centering in the horizontal width. So we have the cursor size, right? So we can divide it, or we can subtract off half of the cursor size as well. So half of the cursor will be on the left of the middle, and half will be on the right of the middle. And visually, it'll be in the center, right? In the exact middle. So we can do that for X and Y, and the X and Y resolutions. And I'm just doing a square cursor, so these will both just take the same size. If you had a rectangle or a different X and Y, you know, you do a different size for X and Y as well. But... That should be all right. That should be the middle of the screen. And we can draw the cursor here. Maybe abstract it out later, but that's okay. So how do we draw the cursor? Well, we need the frame buffer base, which is why I had that before. Thought that's what it was. Yeah. Oh, frame buffer base. GOP mode, frame buffer base. So I want to offset by that amount to draw... I less than cursor size. So this will be, we can draw up, down, left to right. So let's just do this right now. Cursor size, I plus plus. This will be drawing the cursor, which right now is just a box. And we do need a, we do need a pixel for that actually. So I know my pixel resolution. Uh, yeah, let's just get a blit pixel. So we have a 4-byte value to draw. On my machine, it's BGR. We might have to change this, or we can get it at runtime. I guess I'll hard code it for now to this format. But let's say we draw a white pixel, right? Which will just be everything. Well, well, we'll make it slightly gray. So white, completely white would be 255 for blue, green, and red. So I'll just reduce that shade by a little bit and make them all E's instead of all F's. So we'll draw a light gray instead of just a stark white. So I want to get the frame buffer base. Let's say we have a pointer to that. We can make a pixel buffer even. Uh, 
We'll have that to the frame buffer. This is just a very verbose way of doing this, but that's all right. And we'll want that. Okay. So I'll get a pointer to the frame buffer base. And we can add on a value, which will be added in terms of the width of this, which will be four bytes for each pixel. So how do we do that? We can offset by it or we can add to it. We'll say we can offset. So we need to offset by Y, which is gonna be the vertical resolution. Uh, so I probably should cache these values. So let's do that. This way it's less typing. That way it's less typing. Okay. Okay, so we'll have the Y resolution. It needs to be multiplied by our cursor Y. Well, it won't be the Y resolution. It would be the scan lines, wouldn't it? Uh, so that's okay. Mode info. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> I think there's like a scan line. Pixels per scan line. That's what I was looking for. And that's in the mode information. So we'll have pixels per scan line instead of the X res because we have to multiply by the scan line amount. So pixels per scan line times whatever row we're at on the screen for the mouse cursor. So it's Y times the, the pitch or the width, and then we add on X. So plus cursor X. And I don't need to surround this with parentheses, but I will. So that should be the right position, and that will equal our pixel. It should be all white. And I need to draw that for the X and the Y to make a square or rectangle to draw this, this box cursor we're doing. So I can do I less than, yeah, I less than cursor size. Although I can do X, really. X and Y. Or maybe Y and X works better. I want to start at this location. Yeah, okay, okay. So for each, uh, we'll do Y and then X. Because that might be, make a little more sense. So for each X value and each line that we're drawing for the cursor, I want to set the pixel here. We'll increment the frame buffer to the next one, right? So we'll do that for all of these. And after that, I'll increment the frame buffer to the next line. So we'll go down by pixels per scan line, but then we have to subtract off the width that we just did, which would be cursor size. Otherwise, we'd have a stair step effect. We want to uh, go back to the left. So we go down, go back to the left to draw the next line. So that should be the pixels in a line minus the size of the cursor. Okay. I think this would draw a cursor. We can check. Uh, because emulation doesn't do it if it goes here. So I'll draw it here first. So emulation will show a white box in the middle, hopefully. Except it won't. First time used, 752, really. I had this right here, FB. Oh, unless I didn't get the mode info, no. How's that undeclared? I declared it right above. Oh, because of this. Probably. Uh, to find that above, right? Yes, okay. Oh, but that's defined after this point, sorry. <laughs> Let me... I'm trying to do things out of order because emulation doesn't uh, do it, so... Um, let me not draw this here. Just to make sure that that compiles. It does, I'm not using those. Okay. So for emulation, I'm going to ignore this found mode right now. 
And I'm going to do this, draw the cursor, and then I'll get a key, just to prove that it works. Which it doesn't, probably, but... Okay, there we go. There we go. So we see that white box in the middle. It should be directly in the middle, so my calculation was right. I know the basics of 2D graphics, I swear. Just not very often. Okay. Not when I'm undergoing a sundowner effect, but okay, we can draw the initial cursor here. We can draw it at the new position later after we, we after we recalculate these positions. So I'll get that. So when I want to draw the cursor, I'll do this. I'm just going to reset to the start of the frame buffer here before I do this stuff so it'll still work. Okay, so we need to calculate the new cursor X and Y positions given these values in, in millimeters. Okay, so the new positions for cursor X and Y would be the current ones uh, plus however far they moved really. So we have the X and Y pixels that they moved according to the millimeter amount, so that's 2% per millimeter. So X resolution times however much they moved, which is going to be the millimeter amount. These should all be ints, yeah, integers. So that amount times the millimeter would equal the amount of pixels that we moved, so I'm going to have that be the cursor X position movement, because that should be hopefully in pixels. <laughs> that's what I'm calculating when I'm drawing it at least. So we can add we can add that to each one, and if it's uh, yeah since it's assigned value, if it's negative, it will add and in effect subtract from this value instead. Okay, so that should be all right. Make sure we use y for that. When I say should, I mean hopefully. <laughs> so if it moves negative five millimeters to the left, the cursor should move left five millimeters when we draw it. So of course, where it's currently at, it's going to keep drawing white and like a line. So we'll have to overwrite the position that we're currently at with whatever our background color is, which is blue that I decided. So let's do that first. Okay, so when we move, um, yeah, before I do this, uh, draw a cursor. So let's say it's, let's get pixel amount to move per millimeter. Let's say first uh, overwrite current cursor position with screen background color to erase cursor. Let's do that. So I'll have two pixels. Let's say we have a, a background pixel. So this pixel up here, let's put this up here. Let's say we have a cursor pixel, and they'll have a background pixel. And the background will be the EFI blue, which is hex 98. So nothing in the um, in the G and R values here. And this will be more like a, a light gray. Okay, so when I'm first drawing the cursor, that can be set to the cursor pixel, and when I move the cursor, we can draw the background and then draw the cursor, yep, okay. It's been a while since I've done mouse code, so it's a little messy, apologies, but I'm not drawing, I'm not writing, you know, the most streamlined code right now. Uh, but it's pretty close. So we'll overwrite with the back, sorry, we'll overwrite with the background color, move the cursor, and then write at the new position. That seems all right. That seems like it would be okay. So I will make a change here, maybe in this video, maybe in the next one, depending, but I do want to make a change to draw like, well, this, this would work actually. No, if there's text or something, sorry, I'm scatterbrained. If there's text or something or a picture or whatever, whatever we're moving the mouse over, 
it's not necessarily just going to be a solid color and it's not necessarily going to be the background color even if it is so this is a stop gap right just for testing if we're moving the mouse over web page or over whatever you know i'm moving my mouse here over this the stuff behind the stuff behind the mouse we don't want to sort of erase that data because right now if we just draw white over it the frame buffer is going to have the data for a white pixel and whatever was there before is going to be effectively gone if we draw over it it doesn't matter we can't recover that data so what I actually want to do is save, uh, we'll say save frame buffer data at mouse position first, then redraw that data um, instead of just overriding with background color, right? And then when we do this, um, yeah, it, 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 would be, it would be the same thing. Instead of saving the background color, we'll, we'll save it, whatever's there, and then we'll redraw it when we move the mouse. So I'll do that. So the way I can do that, uh, maybe we could read the frame buffer data like we're doing here, uh, or we could have a blit buffer. <laughs> so we can have a blit buffer and use whatever that one blit operation was, which is, I think, EFI video two blit buffer so that would be one use case for for the different blit operations if we want to read a rectangle of frame buffer data from the screen back into a buffer and then write it back out later then we can use those two or we can just read and write it directly which is probably a little more performant of course the hardware the firmware may be more optimized and not do basic c code like i'm doing i just wanted to put that down so i remembered it for later Okay, so of course I won't be able to test this because emulation, you know, I'm saying I can't find a valid mode, so I'll have to hook up the laptop and record that again to test and use up a ton of bitrate, but that's okay. So we'll do that. Okay, let's see what all I messed up, or hopefully didn't mess up all too badly. We'll find out. Should be a little sharper. Okay, so can I move? I can move the cursor. Is that down? That's right. That's left. I don't know where it went. I should probably put the position X and Y on the screen as well. And I'll go back with escape. We'll redo that. I think with the floats, it's probably getting incorrect stuff. If I move up, uh, I mean, that move now that moves up and down. It's a little awkward. Because I have to like rotate my frame of reference, you know? <laughs> and of course, if it adds and subtracts and it goes beyond the bounds of the screen, I do need to bound it within the screen. I'm not doing that. Um, so it just goes off and, and does like wild stuff. But also, if I move it, it also freezes. So I don't know. Oh, now it's frozen. Press an escape. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I think I broke it. That's all right. I'll, I'll fix in and bound the thing within the screen. I'll do that. All right, let's try to fix a couple of things here. I am curious how this works without the float. So I'm going to also do this. So what's better than testing one thing at a time? Testing multiple things at a time, of course. So that's okay. And instead of doing that, we'll just divide these. So if it ends up that the resolution, quote unquote, is worse, then I'll, you know, I'll change this back. But um, right now I'm curious how this behaves. Only with integer calculations. Which is a lot easier. So if we have, well... We can do a similar thing here, it's, except instead of checking this, we'd check if if the relative movement was above zero, if we moved it all. Then we'll set it to one. Same for y. Same for the y value. Okay, but I do want to bound it uh, by these. 
So keep cursor in screen bounds. So if cursor x is less than zero, we'll have it equal to zero. If it's greater than our x resolution, then we'll keep it to the x resolution. I did set that up right. Yes, above there. Similar for y. If it's greater than y, make cursor y equal to it. And if it's less than zero, have it be equal zero. Okay, so we'll try those things and we'll do the float values and see if it works any better. Oh, sorry, do the int values instead of the float values. And see if it works any better or, or more jank. It might be a little more stair-steppy or a little more um, sudden movements for the small movements here instead of float, which may have slightly smoothed, smoothed that out. We'll see. But I also want to make sure that if we're getting proper signed values, that it does follow the directions I'm moving closer than it was before. <laughs> so we have the, the millimeter movement. Let's say X position and Y position, as well as the millimeter and button movements. So we can do that. This will be cursor X and cursor Y. Okay. Suppose, suppose I should do that same thing up here. Except this would be wherever this is. Just want to make sure. Of course, I'm not printing that, but okay. So we'll check again <laughs> and see if stuff works on the laptop any better. Uh, let me... Well, I just made it right, so it should be good. Okay. Make sure it's still under SDC. Write it to... Write it to the USB. This is where a tripod would come in handy. Come in very handy. So now we get the mouse X and Y position. So that's approximately the middle of the screen. So that printing worked. Move it to the right and the left. Okay, so it is more accurate if I'm not converting floats to, well, at least for small movements. You see it's jumpy. It may have been smoother with floats, but the directions right now are more accurate. Um, and it's okay if I move the mouse over the text for the line that I'm redrawing, because I'm reprinting that text. But if I move the mouse, you see, over the other text, of course, it's going to destructively move over, because I'm writing that, that background color in the mouse, and I'm not redrawing the screen data, so... If I move left, right, up, down, I'm not going to say it's the most accurate experience. I will say it's quote unquote serviceable <laughs> and enough to show that you can get basic mouse movement and it does work. My printing's a little off when the numbers are larger than some digits. So I, I should like overwrite where I'm drawing this mouse data here. I should overwrite that with um, blanks so we don't get this thing like, you know, the four zeros for RB, for example. But anyway, this shows that basic mouse movement works. And if you want to handle non-destructively drawing stuff, that can be an exercise for the reader, right? A cop-out answer. I might do that on the next one to start off with because it's not going to be very much. I'm just tired right now. And uh, my goal was to show that mouse movement works. Let's see if the screen bounds work. It stops up there. Um, oh, I have to do cursor minus. That's, that's easy enough. It'll stop on the left and up boundaries because I'm, I'm calculating against cursor X and Y, which is the top left of the cursor, right? So I'm not... <laughs> so it does stop at the bottom, but it stops after the cursor disappears, and the same for the right side. That's an easy fix. So I'll fix that here, too. Okay, so to do that easy fix where I'm calculating the bounds for the screen, all we have to do is say the zero is fine, but X res, it would actually X res minus the size of the cursor. Or even minus cursor size over 2, but we'll just do size of the cursor. 
and then we'll have it equal x res minus cursor size. So this will stop the cursor from going, it'll stop the right side of the cursor from leaving the right edge of the screen, instead of stopping the left side from leaving the right edge. And the same for y, it'll stop the bottom of the cursor from leaving the bottom of the screen, instead of the top of the cursor leaving the bottom, which is what was, what was happening. So that's very easy, which is good. So okay, other than that, um, that's all I wanted to do was show basic mouse support, and I did that. It still took probably over a couple hours, but we'll see. It's not too bad. Just one isolated contained function. Hopefully you learned a little bit, or it was the slightest bit entertaining. I'll leave the floats there, comment it out for now, because I might explore that more in the future. But this draws the cursor. So on the start of the next one, I may or may not um, test non-destructively drawing the mouse cursor over data. Okay, continuing with the UEFI dev here, I may add this on to the end of the last video for mouse support, or this may be part of a new video <laughs> where I'm doing other stuff. I don't know yet. We'll see how that ends up in editing, but I wanted to fix up a, a few things from the mouse, the mouse support drawing a cursor that I forgot, or they can be bug fixes or other things. So let me do that. I added a couple new things here. I haven't used them in the code, just a couple of sort of global constant definitions. So one for the pixels, just setting explicitly, hey, we have a light gray, which is going to be just under all Fs for stark white for a, a blue, green, red reserved 8888 EFI graphics output pixel here, just setting those as defines and I'm using them to hopefully make a cursor. So my cursor size was eight by eight. So I just made an eight by eight buffer here of graphics output and blit pixels that I set to these two constant values. So I have them in, you know, eight lines of eight each. And I just used uh, <laughs> GIMP as a sort of pixel editor, you know, zoomed way in because the canvas is only eight by eight. And I just draw with the pencil at a size of one, and you know, you can set the individual pixel values. So you just, you know, use X to change the color and set them. So from kind of zoomed out a bit, it looks kind of like an arrow. So I'm hoping that'll look slightly better as a sort of mouse cursor. It's not really large enough to make, you know, like this cursor that I'm moving over here, this mouse pointer. It might have to be like 20 by 20 or something. But for an 8 by 8 cursor, powers of 2, I'll try that out and see how it works. And this is just laying out, you know, where the gray pixels are in here and the black pixels are. I just laid them out here. So my goal is to have sort of, we'll say emulated transparency, where the last value in the pixel, this reserved value, can be used as an alpha channel of sorts. So if I read it and it's zero, I'll just say, you know, take whatever the background color is, which for my case, that's going to be blue. So I could add that in, actually. Didn't think of that. We'll add blue, that'll just be 98. So this will be an EFI blue value. But I can just add that in for... Uh, maybe for the alpha channel, or in this case, just if it's all zeros, I'll just say for the mouse cursor, I'll just replace that with blue. I'm just laying that out here. I could draw that to begin with, but maybe you'll have different background color. I don't know. I'm not too good at emulating alpha transparency stuff. So, all right, test mouse. I guess I already called it background pixel, didn't I? But I called it blue. I guess I'll get rid of that. And we have cursor pixel. I already have those up above as constants, so I'll have to replace those. So the only other new thing that I added was this cursor size I had as U and N. So currently this is going to cause a bunch of warnings. You know, a bunch of warnings or errors now because I'm not using pixel values. But for U and N, when I'm bounding the cursor within the screen, you know, these other values are signed. They're int N or they're int 32s. They're not unsigned integers. So to get rid of these warnings and to fix a, a bug or two where the cursor was not stopping at the edges of the screen, well, at the bottom or right edges of the screen, which I thought I fixed, I didn't fix, because <laughs> we had some undefined behavior or other optimizations to where if this is unsigned, it kind of didn't do the calculations exactly correctly. But we're unbounding the cursor down here. If I make it all signed as a sign comparison against against cursor size, then it does end up actually stopping at the right or bottom edges correctly, according to where the cursor is. Um, you'll have to take my word for it at the moment, but that's what we're doing. Cursor pixel I don't have, so 
I'll change where I have that. 789, I didn't do that. There we go. So I won't have this be cursor pixel if I'm just drawing a box right now. We'll say it's the light gray pixel. And instead of the background, we'll have pixel blue. And the definitions, it still doesn't like that. Expected expression. Um, oh, it doesn't work in there. Okay. I would have to cast it because it's just a struct value. I'd have to cast that. So, oh, maybe never mind. That can still be an int. Um, I guess I do have to do that, huh? <laughs> Obviously, I've tested this before. Not really. I can do this, though, and that'll probably work. The background can be blue. All right. If I can actually type make correctly, hey, nothing's going to show up because this doesn't do anything there. All right, so a couple of other issues that I wanted to clear up was the fact that I'm using locate handle buffer right, to find all of the simple pointer protocol protocols, all the handles that support a simple pointer protocol. But what this does uh, in firmware is allocate a buffer using something similar to allocate pool. It allocates a pool of memory that it returns uh, in the buffer that you specify, the pointer to the buffer that you specify. It fills that in with an actual buffer that's allocated for memory. We have to free that memory. So before I end this function here, I am going to do that assuming we got this far and didn't return. So if we returned, we couldn't find a mode and the status was okay. So I'm assuming that is all good and I don't have another return value. Yeah, so we can do that, do that at the end. So I can say free memory pool that was allocated by locate handle buffer. And we can just call BS on that, call free pool and we can give it the handle buffer. Uh, this is a void pointer, but since an EFI handle is a void pointer, we can just send this directly. If you feel better about it or it looks nicer, we can always cast that to a void, but it is a void pointer, so we can just free that memory. And that is already specified, because I did that on the last video, I just never used it. <laughs> so all it does is take in a void pointer to free memory. But it has to be allocated by allocate pool, which locate handle buffer is. So free pool needs to be allocated by allocate pool. And that'd be under protocol handler. Let me just reread this to make sure. It is the caller's responsibility to call free pool when the caller no longer requires the contents of buffer. Yep. Okay, so that's what I'm doing there. All right, so one other kind of refactor, because I was looking at it this morning and I said, why did I do this <laughs> when I'm drawing the mouse cursor? Like I'm setting the value, but then I'm incrementing the frame buffer cursor, which is fine. It looks a little janky though. We could do this a little bit better. So just everywhere where I'm drawing the mouse cursor, which is only three loops that look like this. Um, the whole reason of having X and Y is so that we can use that to calculate the offset within the frame buffer, and we wouldn't need to, you know, increment the cursor itself. It's kind of kind of janky. So I should have an equivalent line of logic if I just add in the current Y and the current X value into these Y and X offsets. Since these are just indices in the loop, they'll start at zero, so the first one would be times... We don't want to do that. Well, it would be cursor Y plus zero. Yeah, so that would be okay. So cursor Y plus zero would start at the same location. And similarly, I can do plus cursor X plus X here. And then I should not need to do these. I shouldn't need to move down a line because when Y increments for the next line, it'll do cursor Y plus one and it'll go down a line and then do X offset from that location. So that would be a little bit better than doing this. So I'm going to see if that works similarly, and that's, you know, two less lines of code if it does, so that'll be nice. And we'll see if that, you know, works the same or any better. So I will do that. I'm trying to think how I want to do this. You can test it on the laptop. Stick the USB in. Again, that's SDC. So I need to get a hard drive in there. SDC, we'll do one meg at a time. And I have to tell it, yes, I want to use my own device. There we go. 
All right, turns out I had to reset the app on my phone, even though I reset everything else anyway. So, yeah, you can see the reflection, because <laughs> I actually have natural light coming in, believe it or not, from the window blinds. So, all right, we'll see how the mouse looks now, after those changes. And I do want to draw the actual different buffer for the mouse cursor. I just want to see if these bug fixes and things worked first, as well as focusing. I wish autofocus worked a little better, but it's for a screen, so... That's to be expected. All right, so can I move left? Or right, rather. That's left, that's up, that's down. So does it stop at the edges of the screen? That's the top left. The bottom left, it does stop there. And now the right edge, it stops, and the bottom, it stops. It's kind of it's kind of awkward, because I have to... <laughs> the laptop is at a, you know perpendicular angle to where I'm seated, so it's kind of awkward using the touchpad, but uh, this stuff still works. I should overwrite the line with blanks so it doesn't have, you know, odd values like the RB000 there, but it seems to work a little bit better. Uh, and I do want to non, like I said last time, I want to non-destructively sort of draw over this text. So if I'm using the button, I think this does, well right now it doesn't look like it actually. Hmm. Oh yeah, it does a little bit. In some areas you can see a little bit where I'm overdrawing the cursor. It kind of erases a couple of pixels, parts of the text. So I want to fix that as well. So we'll do that and I'll try to make this just regular dot into more of a an arrow. <laughs> so I might have to make it a little bigger, but that's fine. We'll see. All right, so that's what it should look like. So let's go and change that. What did I want to do? Oh, where I redraw this stuff. Um... Yeah, so how big is, first off, this text is 60 characters. We probably want to add a little bit onto that as well. So I'll just do it when I redraw this. We'll just, I'll say erase text first before reprinting. And we'll just make, first of all, we'll make all of this into blanks. And then I'll add in more blanks. That's 60 blanks. I'll just make it 80 blanks. So if my camera isn't covering the bottom right corner, it says 80. But if it is, it says 80. <laughs> That's 80 spaces. I could do that in a loop as well. Uh, but oh well. So okay, ideally I would want to save the frame buffer position and then redraw. Let's see if we can draw a mouse cursor first, which would kind of be doing a blit buffer instead of this stuff. Or I can still do what I'm doing here, but take from the cursor buffer as well, according to the colors that are contained in there. So what I could do, instead of making these... I could make these the background color, instead of just making it black. I don't know why I was trying to be fancy with that. That's alright. <laughs> so we'll change that to blue everywhere. Alright. That way it'll use my background color blue here and mess up the formatting, of course. But that's fine. That's four characters instead of five, that's why. Okay. So if we want to draw the mouse cursor, how would I be doing that? Well, where I'm drawing the cursor, including up here, frame buffer equals a cursor pixel. We really just have to change that cursor pixel to be the same offset like we're doing here but into the cursor buffer. So I called it, yeah, I just called it cursor buffer. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll do this again. It's just a lot of, a lot of visual noise. So I'll say cursor pixel, which is what I'm getting there. Um, cursor pixel, I don't know. I'll say cursor pixel or buffer pixel. So that needs to be offset from the cursor buffer, so the cursor buffer can be offset similarly. We have cursor y plus y, so we have each of these lines here, so really, really we just have to do y times the cursor size plus x. So y times the stride or the pitch to get the right row to use, and then offset within that row. And then that should give the value that I want to use there. So I'll, I can remove this other cursor pixel variable here in a second, but we can see if that works. 
So get the, get the pixel from the cursor buffer and then write that pixel at the right location within the frame buffer. Right, so that's all I want to do there. Every time we're going to be drawing the cursor. I probably could maybe deduplicate doing this three separate times in three separate loops, but anyway, we can see if that's all we need to do. Maybe, maybe not. Unused variable, well, I am using, oh, I'm not using it down here, yeah. That was the whole point of redoing that, to use a different value. And then it says 712, 713 are not used, okay. If I can type correctly, so I'm not using background. Okay, now I'm not using those. All right, so I'll, I'll leave what I, go back to where I was, I'll leave what I have, I'll just have it be. CSR pixel. All right, so again, an emulation, that's not gonna show anything. We can see if it works um, on yield hardware. So like professional speedrunners that do console games with multiple discs, my, my uh, personal best times are limited by how fast I can switch out a USB stick. Isn't that something? But sometimes these switch up, they don't on me because I keep my discs and USBs pretty static. I don't switch and add and remove a lot. But sometimes these will switch up, so that's why I keep checking if it's still SDC. Sometimes they can be different. And you want to be careful with that, or else you'll erase your data, because uh, DD is nice like that. Linux is nice. It has no care for your mortal data desires. All right, we'll reset this screen, and we'll try her again. Oh, I did a different thing that time. I didn't mean to. I also didn't mean to bump the camera. Or my phone. It's a little tilted, huh? Up slightly. Okay. Just mouse. Uh, oh, I don't see it. Oh, that's not good. Oh, I didn't redraw the... Uh, I'm stupid. I am... Dumb. When I'm redrawing the text, I need to put an R on the end. So it goes back to the start, and then redraws that, and goes back to the start. <laughs> Although it didn't look like the cursor pixel was working either, so that's interesting. It should have been, maybe it wasn't. So it should be 0 times 8 plus 0. 0 times 8 plus 1 plus 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. When it reaches the cursor size, which is 8, we go down, and it'll be 1 times cursor size, be 8 plus 0, 8 plus 1, 2. No, that should work for getting the values. Interesting. Maybe that's not correct. Um, we could check if it's correct, right? By actually drawing the thing first. I'll just wait and we'll get a key and just uh, do nothing. Get rid of that error right now. So I should check that it draws first, right? So there we go. It does draw. <laughs> it does draw and it looks like an arrow. That's all I was trying to check. And it gets a key and does an infinite loop, so that's why that's doing that. Okay. Should have tested that first, sorry about that. But I know that does work. So I do make, just to make sure. Just to make sure it goes back and escape, and that works, all right. It's awkward, because I have to keep going back to OBS to do the other capture. <laughs> so this is going to be fun in editing, I'll have to add or remove transitions and stuff. And then it likes to not be, it likes to not be focused as well. Go back up. Okay, there we go. We have a little mouse pointer. Hey. And it still writes the thing down the screen. Interesting. Oh, I guess I'm not overriding. I'm not overriding the mouse pointer position with the background or anything anymore, right? So that's why it just does that. <laughs> well, this is a good case study in what not to do, right? <laughs> Interesting, at least we know it draws an arrow now, so that's nice. 
I'll escape and get out of that. Ah, well, that's interesting. Okay. So it draws this, goes back to the start, draws 80. I guess if I do 80, that's the size of the default screen, so I should do like 79 or 78 or something. That's probably why. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We'll just draw 75 or even 70. So this should be 72. Yeah, I'll just draw 70 spaces so it doesn't go down and write a new line. That, I wasn't considering that either. That's probably part of it. So I'm also, am I drawing over with the background color? I'm not, right? Because I'm just drawing the new cursor pixel. Okay, yeah, and then instead of drawing where the background was, I'm actually just drawing the cursor twice. <laughs> so I don't want to do that. Um, I could draw it differently. I wonder if I do, well, this won't work right. The pixel blue effect. It does not like me doing that. I can do that with um, compound literals. Is it not? Yeah, blip pixel. Right, that'll work because of compound literals. Okay, so what I can do also is do that and say which looks like I'm casting it. But that works. That works the same. Since this constant will be the same as this, I'm just making a compound literal and casting that sort of array of bytes or a struct value. All right, so that'll override it. I do kind of want to save the frame buffer data, though. Maybe with video to blip buffer, blip buffer to video, so we could do that. So let's say I have a save buffer. Um, let's say I have a save buffer similar to this cursor buffer. I'll put it up here, and then it'll be the same size. So we'll say save buffer, and it'll, it'll also be 8 by 8 which is the size of the cursor here. It's so maybe cursor size times cursor size. I might get an error that, that isn't a constant value. Unused variable. No, it doesn't. Interesting. Okay, well, we can do that. And maybe it'll be zeros to start off with. That's fine. Or I can even make it all EFI blue values, but I'll just do that. So if we have a save buffer, I want to probably save the cursor first. So what I could do is like a read loop like this and save the... I would just kind of reverse these two lines, except I'd be writing to the save buffer from the video buffer. Or we can use the UE5 blit functions as well. Either way. But say I wanted to do it like this. We'd probably need two loops. Or just do them both in the same loop. So this is setting where the cursor is at all just to blue. So I could read from the frame buffer instead of doing that. And set into the save buffer at that position. Uh, which would be similar to what I'm doing here which would be y times cursor size plus x, similar to how I did the to get the value from the cursor buffer, similarly to that. And I can set that equal to the value that's going to be in the frame buffer, where that value is for the cursor. So I'm just reading through. I mean, this is like a mem copy, effectively. <laughs> but I can't do a mem copy because I have to offset by a line for each line, right? I can't just read straight across. That's not going to work. But I can save to the save buffer from the frame buffer because I set that equal, yeah, to the same size of data there. Okay, then I can draw the cursor at that position here. So what I want to do is originally... Let me do this... Um, to start off with. So I draw the cursor to begin with. So what I'm going to do is save the value that's at the frame buffer position to begin with by copying that. And then I'm going to draw the cursor sort of over top. But I have the data that was there that should be saved in this save buffer. Uh, and save 
underlying frame buffer data first. I guess do that. And also save the underlying data first. Okay. So that way we save the data, we draw the cursor. So then when we draw the cursor again, uh, or when we move the cursor, what I can do is redraw the saved data. So what I can do instead of setting this equal here, yeah, yeah, I can take what's currently in the saved buffer when we go, <laughs> my brain is not great at explaining. When I initially draw the cursor, I'm gonna save what's currently there and draw the pixel or draw the cursor over top of that area. So we have what originally was in that area in the save buffer. So whenever I move the cursor and I get a mouse event down here, when I want to draw the cursor again down here, I'm gonna first draw that save data before moving the cursor to a new position. So we restore what was previously there. And that just sets the data at the frame buffer equal to the save buffer again at the cursor position within the an offset within the save buffer. Okay. And then I move the cursor by doing this stuff. And then before I draw the cursor at the new position, I need to save the data again. So save frame buffer data before drawing over it. Right, and I can just re, well, I don't have to redo this because I'm only doing offsets and not incrementing the frame buffer. So I really only have to get that uh, once for the buffer there. So I can save a few lines. Yeah, delete that. I can save a few lines as well by not, have to re, not having to reset that every time. Okay. So we save the data at the new cursor position. And then we draw over it. Which takes from the cursor pixel in the cursor buffer. Okay. So I have like a three buffer thing going on. The frame buffer, the cursor buffer, and then the save buffer for a cursor size of data that is being overdrawn from the cursor on the frame buffer. Okay. So we save that data, draw over it, and then just to make sure it's in an event loop when it gets the next mouse event, it will draw from the save buffer, it'll move the cursor position, get the new save buffer from that position and draw it again. I think that'll be okay. I'm hoping that'll be okay. Undefined reference to a stack check. Uh, that's nice. That's probably because I have the buffer on the stack and it doesn't like that being there. If I do that, that's not going to work. Um, stack checking is fun. I could turn off the stack smash protection, but let me see if I can just do this and not have to worry about it. Just put a zero there. We'll say buffer to save frame buffer data at cursor position. And then that is also going to be 8 by 8. So assuming the cursor position is 8 by 8. So that's not great making that global, but it gets rid of the stack protection thing. Because I'm not smashing the stack with extra data there. I guess that's why it was doing that. I mean, it would be 64 times 4 bytes, effectively. Because each one of these pixels is 4. So maybe that is a lot for the stack. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, we'll see if that works. I suppose I have to check on hardware again. Ugh. Going back and forth. Check that the USB position is all right. Make it again just to make sure. SDC, we're going to write to there. I didn't type in my password correctly, except that I did. Okay, I thought I missed a letter. All right, reset the droid cam. Probably have to reset... The focus, once again, eventually it'll turn on. There we go. Yeah, I wish this was more stable. I'm trying. The The stickiness on the bottom of this, like, car dash phone holder is not, <laughs> is not the stickiest. It still has decent suction, like a vacuum, but not, like, the, the sticky material isn't sticky anymore. So, okay. So if I move the mouse... Uh-huh, you'll see it takes, in this case, just the background data 
that wherever wherever the mouse is at is just blue right here so it it saves off that blue in the same size square as the cursor so that when I move it we can redraw it and then redraw the cursor at the new position thus saving that data so also here although it's kind of it's kind of hard to tell before it would sort of erase some of these pixels on the upper two text lines and now it does not do that because we're saving and restoring the frame buffer data so that was what I wanted to do to finish out the mouse portion of this. So if this ends up being, I don't know, maybe it'll be like a small part two, or I'll just add it on and have like a two and a half hour video. But anyway, hopefully that shows basic mouse support. Obviously the movement isn't good. I would like smoother mouse movement. So if you have any suggestions on that, uh, let me know. I can maybe research like linear interpolation or something by getting time values and trying some primitive form of acceleration. I don't know. But, you know, if you need something kind of in the ballpark of somewhat accurate mouse movement, well, we have that now. So hopefully that was educational enough, seeing me mess up and uh, getting stuff working. So, all right. Thank you for watching. The next one, I guess I'll make another video. I don't know. <laughs> I guess I'll splice this onto the end or do a second part. But the next stuff I want to do, uh, let's get rid of this so I don't use up all my bitrate. Still on that screen. Let's go to display capture. All right, so the next thing that I want to do is probably load files with the load file protocol. And we'll have to get, I think, the loaded image protocol and deal with that. And I don't remember, I don't remember where that's at, to be honest. So I have to look that back up. <laughs> um, control F doesn't do that. Loaded image, that should find something. Yeah, loaded image protocol, I think is what I'm gonna have to use to find like device paths and get um, get the image that is initially loaded. You know, the, the image handle and the system table are passed into EFI main. Um, and that image, you can get data about it with the loaded image protocol if you call it for that passed in, that initial passed in image. And that'll give you the device path so you can look up what hardware is connected to this image this UEFI image. We should get stuff from there. Load image size. We can get the size and base and the code and data type. We might need to use this. I don't remember. But I'll look stuff up. I know we will be using, or I'll try to use, some file, some file protocols that may be under media access. Yeah, there's a simple file system and there's file protocols. So, uh, minimal interface. So we'll have a file protocol, which we can use to open, close, read, write, you know, do all this. So I'm going to look and see if this will work to read files from the, uh, the EFI system partition. And I'll get back on, I guess, another video. So again, thanks for watching. I'll see you then. Cheers. Get my agua. Cheers.